Hi, everybody, and thanks for coming back to another episode of Lunch Bucket Leftovers. The star of the show today is going to be some locally sourced beef short ribs. Uh, we'll match that up with some hash brown potatoes, and we'll stuff some mushrooms. Hang around. It's going to be great. Scott from Hedge Apple Farm in Buckystown, Maryland, had saved me a few of the beef short ribs. When I saw them, I was totally blown away. They are absolute monsters. Take a look. That is probably the nicest pair of beef short ribs I have ever seen. And they are going to be fantastic. We're going to start with trimming away some of this excess fat. And as you can see, all I'm doing is simply just going right down the rib, taking a little bit off uh, as I go. I don't want to take too much of it away, but I do want to protect the meat in some manner. But I'm going to take a little bit off. Uh, each section. This meat is so nice that hardly any of the fat needs to be removed. And a lot of this fat is just pulling right off the top. There we go. You can see, look how nice and thick and meaty that is. That is absolutely phenomenal. This one here is also going to be good. Look at that. That is beautiful. God, I love this beef. First thing that we're going to do now that we have the beef all trimmed, just salt and pepper. Pretty straightforward, 50-50 mix. And second, we're going to go with some Heath Riles uh, beef rub. Give it a little bit more of a spicy flair, but still keeping it nice and simple. So we're going to start by prepping the meat. And we're going to do that just by simply taking a paper towel and drying off any of the moisture that may be on the meat. The spices, the seasoning that we put on this beef will start to get the meat sweaty. And as a result, what will end up happening is, is that that moisture will draw back down into the beef. So when we put it on the grill and it starts to smoke, it'll really adhere to the beef. So we're gonna use, we're gonna use one of these ribs for the salt and pepper, and we'll use the second rib for the uh, beef rub. So we'll take this one for the salt and pepper, and we're just gonna do an even coat on all four sides. Pat down to make sure that it, uh, it sticks. Nice thing about beef is that it can really take the salt and pepper. It really handles it well. And we'll use our Heath Riles beef rub as our second seasoning on the second rib. The bottom side doesn't need a whole lot because it's got the it's got the membrane on there, and the membrane usually stays in place so that it uh, keeps everything together. Okay, now that we've got the beef ribs all seasoned up and ready to go, uh, we're just going to go outside, get the grill going. And while the uh, grill is getting up to temperature, the meat is going to be sitting under the spices and absorbing all that juicy flavor. I'm going to start with getting some charcoal fired up. I'm going to use my Royal Oak uh, Chef Select, which is absolutely the best charcoal in my opinion. Uh, it lights easy. It's easy to maintain a temperature. It's long lasting and it's extremely reliable. Uh, we'll use a lighter cube to get everything going. Let me show you how I do it. As you can see, I've got the coals on one half of the uh, grill and I'm gonna have my uh, meat side over on this area so it's an indirect. This will help me keep my temperatures low for the great temp and it'll also help to uh, allow that fat that's in the meat to really render out. So you can see I've got some coals uh, all around my uh, wax cube. This is going to uh, light up. And then I'm just gonna slowly build these charcoal cubes all around the wax. Got the grate wide open on the bottom. We're getting pretty close to where we wanna be with regards to the fire. So for right now, we're gonna put the heat shield in, get the grate installed, and we should be all set. Heat shield goes down first. Then we'll put our catch pan in. And 
And last but not least, get our grate in. Now it's just a matter of waiting for the temperature to come up. We've got good smoke coming off the top of the grill now, so it's time to lay down the ribs and get to cooking. Okay, we're an hour in. Uh, during the last hour, when I was checking the temps, I was noticing that it was fluctuating up and down, uh, dropping all the way down to the 200 and teens. So over the years, I've learned uh, not to panic, make small adjustments, and eventually it'll start to come back up, and that's exactly what's happened. I've got it back up in the 225, 230 range, just like I originally wanted. So let's check out and see how they're doing. Oh yeah, that's real nice. Things are coming along real good. Yeah, but let's take a look at the temps and see how that's doing. So the outside is starting to get a little bit dry. We're gonna put some apple cider vinegar uh, on there and moisten it down and we'll come back in an hour. We're another hour in, so let's take a look and see how they're doing. Boy, they are so nice and soft. Thermopen just slides in and out with next to no effort. Look at that. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. So far, we're three hours into this and things are coming along just absolutely perfect. Our meat is nice and soft. It's got great color. However, I did adjust my temperature to come up just a little bit because I'm at the point where I'm about to go through the stall and I want to use the higher temperature to power me through the stall. So hang around. This is what everything looks like at the three hour mark. Nice dark bark. Great color. You can see the pullback on the bones really coming along just great. God, that's phenomenal. Let's take a look at our temps. Yeah, see we're right there. So we're gonna let it ramp up just a little bit and we'll be back. Okay, we're three and a half hours in and because I've adjusted the temperature up, I think we should probably check to see the temperatures of the meat. And we might be at the point now where we're getting ready to wrap. So let's take a look. God, they look awesome. Let's pull these out and see what we're doing. Look at the pullback on that beef. Good Lord. God, look at those. They look absolutely awesome. because I don't want the beef to slow down in cooking. I'm gonna wrap them right here outside uh, as soon as I take them off the grill. Look at these monsters. The way I'm gonna start by wrapping is put them at, at an angle on the paper. This way I'll be able to get maximum coverage on the beef. And it's a very simple process. All you do is wrap them over once, fold in, fold in, and then just go right on, right on over. And so now this is the flat side that will go down on back on the grill and it'll stay in place, just like that. And we'll do the same thing to the second side. So these things have been on the grill for quite some time. It's a good thing too, cause I'm getting pretty hungry. I can't wait to see what they look like. Okay, so now that we've let these run all afternoon on the grill, uh, we're ready to unwrap them. It looks like they're good to go. Oh my God. Look at this. Look at the pullback on those bones. That is absolutely phenomenal. Let's take a look at the other one. Oh, 
Holy cow. Look at that. That is picture perfect. Look at that meat. It just wants to pull apart. That meat is so soft and so tender. And this is what we come out with. Notice the smoke ring and how clean the bone removed from the beef. So as you can see, we started out with some beef short ribs. We let them go low and slow for about five hours. At the point where we wrapped them, we ramped up the temp, got them to about 206 degrees. And this is what we came out with. This meat wants to pull apart and it is so soft and so tender. If you like what I did, I'd appreciate a like and click on subscribe because I'll be coming out with videos on a regular basis. Thanks again for watching and stay safe.